Hey everyone, so it's rainy day here in Lumbee, BC. Uh, so decided to work on some knitting projects today. But we love the rain though. Okay, so this is the super simple, anyone can make a shirt, shirt. Um, yeah, so I've got two, as you can see, I have two different sized squares. So I've measured out the sizes that I want. Uh, let me, since people will ask, I will get a measuring tape and measure. This one, uh, these two flat squares or rectangles were, were done uh, on the knitting machine. Um, but I'm sure this, the same method could be applied for crochet or hand knit or whatever, for, like sewing too. Like it's just a really super simple basic, here's an easy sweater, don't have to think about it, make two squares, sew them together. So this one here on the sewing machine, I did it, it's about, I want to say 19 and a half inches. Okay, across the first, the smaller one, and then I made a bigger square that is, I want to say 24 and a half inches on the knitting machine. And so they're the exact same length, but I made one smaller, like skinnier square, made the width a little bit less, and then the other one I added a couple inches on each side uh, for the width. And so the smaller one is actually going to be this is one's gonna be the back of the sweater, and the bigger one here, this one is actually gonna be the front of the sweater. And uh, the cool thing about making one size bigger than the other is I'll kinda of see if I can show you here. I'm gonna put down the quarter. So this is gonna be the front, and this is the back. And when you sew the edges together, so corner to corner, corner to corner, it kind of does this fun thing all on its own. Because the side, this one's bigger, it naturally just kind of makes its own little neckline. So you can kind of see it there. It makes its own little neckline. And yeah. And then from there, once you have the basic shirt, honestly, you can just leave it like that, or you can uh, add add armholes to it, like like maybe some ribbing on the sides if you want in the bottom, or you can just make it like a super simple t-shirt, and um, it's really easy. So, yeah, I thought I would share that because I kind of came across it by accident. I made one side, the back side. I actually originally made this side to be for the back, and then when I was putting it together. I noticed that it kind of did a nice little dip on its own in the neckline. So I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to make that the front and I'm going to make the skinnier piece the back. And it worked out really nicely. Um, yeah, and I've actually got another sample that I made from the other day that I'll just go grab real quick so you guys can see what it looks like and what I'm talking about when it's all put together. So this one here, this is a sweater that I was working on recently and it was just two squares and like I was saying I noticed that the front dipped really nicely because this front piece is bigger and uh, the skinnier piece ended up on the back and uh, it was just two squares and then I just decided to add on you know the bottom and uh, some ribbing for the arms and just like a really super cute top and that's on the knitting machine so yeah so just to you know, when it's something, when you want a no-brainer, you just want something to help relax, which is quite often my go-to for knitting. I like relaxing projects. This is easy. It's just uh, two squares, one a little bit bigger in width than the other. And it has a really neat effect. So I thought I would share that because I was kind of excited about it because now I can make sweaters without uh, thinking too hard on it. And you know, and if, I, if you want to make it more complicated from there and complex and, and uh, add all the bells and whistles because, you know, when you get, when you start to get really experienced with the knitting machine or crochet or hand knitting, you start to want to have fun with it after a while. But it's kind of just a nice go-to basic pattern and you can kind of build off that. So yeah, so that's that one. And that was the first one I did just recently. And I decided I would do another one 
fall is just around the corner, so I thought I would make one in uh, orange and looks like orange and black, but it's actually orange and dark blue um, plating on there. I did some plating stripes on the knitting machine. And I do have a plating uh, guide if you guys are interested in that for basic plating. And I just decided to use a plating technique to make a bunch of stripes. And it's going to be a nice fall sweater. I'm really excited about it. I can't wait to show you guys when it's all done.